give back efforts. And we are very excited to be a part of the community of people that are getting caffeinated while connecting today, as well as presenting their entrepreneurial dreams, and as a community, helping share ideas and, and answer some questions for them that might be stumbling a little bit for them, or things that might be holding them up to where we can help them move forward and help them become a greater level of success. With that said, we are needing some more presenters. If you would like to present captively to this room, we want to give you that opportunity today. We do have some organizers in the house. Organizers, will you raise your hand so people can see you? If you're an organizer and if you would like to present, please see one of the organizers. I was also, I am also one of those organizers. We would love to have you as a presenter. You can have a captive six-minute presentation at the front of the room, just like what you will see today. And you will have an open forum 20-minute Q&A session with our community. What is our community? You are our community. So we want to encourage you to invite, invite, invite. A couple things that you'll see at One Main Cups. One, you see a lot of open connecting in the morning over caffeination. So we want to encourage you to come and hang out and make some new connections. And we all know that contacts lead to contracts. The more people you connect with, the more cash flow you have. So make sure you're connecting every single Wednesday morning. We're right here in this room. Unless we tell you otherwise, a few weeks ago we did meet at Downstream Casino, and we have had some virtual meetings in the past as needed. But for the most part, we meet here every single Wednesday morning at 8.30 a.m. The meeting kicks off at 9. Open connecting starts at 8.30. So please spread the word. We would love to have more people in our community that can offer feedback to our entrepreneurs. And once again, if you know an entrepreneur that's five years or less in business, we would love to have them captively present. We want to help entrepreneurial efforts in the greater job area. How many think that's a great thing, isn't it? To have greater entrepreneurial efforts. It is the heartbeat of America. It's the heartbeat of Southwest Missouri, and we're very excited to have that. Let me go ahead and say a little bit about our sponsors. First and foremost, the Joplin Area Chamber of Commerce. So this has been a tireless effort over the past two and a half years. Toby Teeter, the president of the Joplin Area Chamber of Commerce, initiated conversations with the Kaufman Foundation and said, we need to have this in Joplin, Missouri. So let's give a great hand to Aaron, Alyssa, Toby, and Doug, the entire chamber team for making this happen. So thank you so very much. Also, Gina Gottlieb, the Joplin Public Library. Gina has been on the ground floor from One Million Cups from the beginning in Joplin, and she was one of the organizers and presenters in Springfield. And she was also one that said, absolutely, we need to have this. So let's give the Joplin Public Library a great hand as well. Also, we want to thank Granny Shapers for the coffee this morning. If you get a chance to stop in and see Mike Wiggins at Granny Shapers, make sure to tell him a big thank you from One Million Cups. Thousands of Southwest Missouri Bank, one of our presenting sponsors as well. Each and every single week, they are uh, allowing us to make this happen and helping make this happen, driving some efforts behind the scenes. So we're very grateful for them. Also, the Missouri Technology Corporation, who assists us with everything we do technologically speaking. With that said, I'm very excited about our presenters today. Let me tell you about our first one. I am sure many of you, when it gets very hot outside and you want a sweet treat, this local business is not foreign to you. If you drive down 20th Street and you see the bright fluorescent neon lights and you scroll through Facebook and Instagram, you see this little thing called Pineapple Bliss. How many have ever had Pineapple Bliss? All right, many of us have. And we're very excited to have the owner and founder of Pineapple Bliss with us today. Megan Escalante is gonna share with you what Pineapple Bliss is and what makes them what they are and how you can come be a part of who they are and frequent their uh, cool treats. It's gonna be a really, really great presentation. And guess what? Today, we have two women-owned businesses. How many think that's an exciting thing, isn't it? We're excited, come on ladies, make some noise for that. That's great, isn't it? With that said, we're very happy to have Megan Escalante. Come on up, Megan, let's give her a big hand. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me again, I'm Megan Escalante. Um, I've been in business for about five years. I began operating Pineapple Bliss in 2016. Uh, a little about me, um, I grew up here in Joplin. I attended and I graduated college at UMKC in Kansas City. I was actually accepted into dental school and I decided not to go. And instead, I got a job as a mortgage broker. Uh, that was before the market tanked in 2008, and so um, after that happened, um, well, I actually always, let me go back, I actually always kept myself really busy, so I should probably tell you this first. Uh, when I was in college, I went to school full-time. Um, I was the treasurer of my biology school, I was uh, in a sorority, and I had multiple offices, I worked a full-time job, and I went to school full-time, so I've always liked keeping really busy. 
Um, so I really liked working at this hair and tanning salon when I worked at the marketing, or I'm sorry, the mortgage company. Um, I worked there too still. And so when that job tanked and the company closed, I decided to move back here to Joplin and I went to cosmetology school because I really wanted to open my own uh, salon. So fast forward a couple years, uh, there was an opportunity for me to purchase a salon that I worked at. I met with Bob Headley through the SCORE program and he helped coach me through this process, but unfortunately I wasn't able to purchase the salon. So from there, I started looking for other entrepreneurial opportunities and I found this Pineapple Bliss trailer for sale on Craigslist. Uh, so I purchased this trailer and I brought it back to Joplin. Um, Um, the first year was definitely a year of working out problems and learning that I was very resourceful at finding solutions. Uh, I worked through the issues with equipment mechanical failures, electrical, um, adjusting the setup to be more functional. Um, I'm pretty sure if any of you have a broken refrigerator out there, I can probably fix it for you. <laughs> um, but honestly, every day it felt like there was something new that had to be tackled um, and not to mention how to drive and back up a trailer. Uh, but I still did all these things while working in the salon almost every single day. Uh, for the first two years, my sales steadily increased uh, at least 20% each year. And then in the fall of 2018, just two years after I opened, I started looking for property so that I could house a brick and mortar location. Um, I felt a drive through would be more convenient uh, on days that I had inclement weather or for parents of little ones that just didn't have the time to get them in and out of the car. Um, so I purchased some land and I actually got a contractor's license for myself and I went to work with the help of my father and my husband. Um, I was the sole driving force in finding the land, completing the purchase, uh, designing all the architectural plans, uh, obtaining the approvals from the city. So it took me about 18 months from the beginning of purchasing the land and starting the rezoning process of the land. Uh, to the time that the construction was completed. Um, I also included a salon in the back side of the building and it has uh, ten, or, I'm sorry, six cosmetology spaces that I rent out and that actually helps cover my mortgage. So, uh, I opened the Avery Salon in January of 2020 and then I opened Pineapple Bliss in March of 2020, which as we all know is the beginning of the pandemic, so that was really fun. <laughs> uh, then in July, I actually took my mobile unit, my trailer, to Lowell, Arkansas, and I'm currently still operating it there uh, from the same location while I'm trying to build my brand there in that area. Um, I am currently searching for brick and mortar locations there as well. So what is Pineapple Bliss? I think a lot of you know, but if you don't, we are a diet and allergy friendly soft serve dessert company. Uh, we bring traditional and unique flavors, uh, topping creations, and we supply macro and ingredient information. So if you have an allergy or an ailment or you just want to fit dessert into your diet or lifestyle, uh, we're here for you. Uh, so word of mouth has actually been a huge driving force to our business and our growth. We don't really have a specific audience. Um, we cater to all ages and all demographics. I'm really constantly spending a lot of time researching and sourcing high quality ingredients because uh, I believe our communities are shifting towards leading healthier lifestyles. Um, we do have more and more competition that arises every day. And I think we take pride in our quality of our product, our presentation, our uniqueness, our cleanliness, our kind employees. We really work hard on that uh, with great customer service. Uh, we try to stay very consistent and also bring ever-changing varieties. So, um, I am the sole driving force of every aspect of my business. I have too many job functions and not enough time. Um, I've spent numerous hours just driving around, studying traffic reports, um, 
Arkansas, traffic maps in Arkansas are looking for new locations in really competitive markets, which we all know right now is pretty difficult. Uh, I do think I recently acquired a really sharp realtor that helped me though in the Northwest Arkansas area. Um, so I am looking for some help. Um, some of my concerns that I do need help with. How do I maintain quality control uh, whenever I'm not physically at each location? Um, how do I form better training manuals or employee or manager handbooks? Um, I get quite asked every day if I will franchise. So my question is, do I want to franchise? And if so, what's the procedure to do this? Um, and also, how do I find the right people to help me do this successfully? Um, and right now I'm trying to train a right-hand person, uh, but I'm struggling with how do I do that appropriately? What are the first uh, set of tasks that I that I give him, and how do I decide? You know, what do I delegate and what do I keep for myself? Um, I also would love uh, tips on being better organized, not for myself but for my employees. I feel like I'm always making lists of things for them to do, but obviously you can't put every single thing on a list, so I need to figure out ways to make them be a little bit more self-sufficient. Okay, are you guys ready to eat some bliss now? <laughs> Great, so, so walk us through uh, how many employees you have, like your day, how much is it, so you, you, you're behind the curtain, it sounds like it's you. Yes. Uh, in, in the challenges to scale. Mm -hmm. um, you know, businesses are people, processes, and products, and you really need to, it sounds like we're focused on processes and documenting them. And, yes. Um, so you, you, I guess you, you kind of know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, are, you, are you looking to train somebody here locally and then plant them in another market? Is that like a goal? Um, so my idea right now is slowly training this employee that I have, or a, an employee, uh, to rise to the task of manager first here, and then they can grow into an area manager, or district manager, and help me with quality control. But I know that's gonna take a lot of time to do, and also I have to reach my goals in order to be able to offer them you know, the goals that they wanna work for. So. More questions? I don't know if I need this or not. Uh, I was kind of just thinking back, you know, looking at that process, sounds like maybe a quality control person is separate from that that trainee or that, that manager person so maybe having a quality person could help you work on some of those processes and make those you know, standard operating procedure manuals right that, yes so and so where do i find that person <laughs> <laughs> one a really good resource especially if you're down in arkansas now uh, i'd encourage you to reach out to startup junkie uh, they are on the square in Fayetteville, so their background in what you're doing, uh, there is a massive chicken franchise called Slim Chickens. It started in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's scaled through franchising with Startup Junkie. So that all happened there. They have access to the best franchise attorneys in the country. Uh, you can have direct contact with the owners of Slim Chicken. Uh, I've met with them many times when I'm talking about the franchising model. Uh, and Startup Junkie is free. Uh, so there's no cost, so I really encourage you to reach out. Uh, Jeff Amerine is the owner there, or the, the partner uh, that you'd want to talk to. Uh, he's a friend of mine, I, I could make that introduction. The fact that you're in Arkansas, you'd be an ideal candidate for them. Uh, in terms of driving around, studying traffic, and trying to learn where to go, uh, the University of Arkansas has a wealth of free information on all of that. Uh, so way back when, I did the exact same thing, looking for uh, places for a drive through tea and coffee shop in uh, Northwest Arkansas. And so the university has everything that you would need available for free. And Startup Junkie can make the introductions there too. Jeff used to be a, a uh, professor in the business department there. So that will solve your problem in Arkansas. You won't, you will have every connection you need, but past that, uh, you know, good luck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess we're done. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it all. Thank you. Jeff Amron, he fixes everything. <laughs> okay, so I haven't had pineapple bliss. I will soon. But can you kind of explain? I mean, it looks like soft serve ice cream. But what exactly is it? 
So uh, it is soft serve ice cream. Okay. Uh, so we have usually two vegan flavors a day, a lactose free kind of creamier flavor and then a keto uh, no sugar added flavor. So we serve it in a cup or a cone. Uh, you can get it as a float or you can get it blended. Uh, and then we have um, different flavored artisanal cones. We have uh, cookies where you can make cookie sandwiches or macarons. Uh, very unique taper, uh, toppings. <laughs> um, Megan, do you have any type of like project software management that you're using with your employees, like crew or any type uh, of app? I do use Homebase. Okay. Yeah. That. I mean, the reason I ask is just because that's always a good communication tool and make it holds your account better, your employees a little bit more accountable on that. Yeah, I just, um, I hate to just gripe at them every day, like, you guys need to do this, you guys need to do this, right. so I'd love to have just a manual or something that just spells it out a little bit better. And are you having corporate training? Uh, kind of. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe not. So I haven't got to tell it either, I've heard so much about it, and so is it, I know, is it, um, yeah, are the recipes like your own? Like this isn't something that you're that, that's available at other places. Is it completely unique that way? There are a few items that we offer that that are not unique, and then there are many that are unique to us. Well, that's very. I can't wait to try. I like I said, I've heard lots about it. Seeing your social media presence. And... I'm sorry. I have one more. So um, you're talking about your processes and having to build it. So I mean, do you have a manager on each shift? Uh, I have a shift lead. Okay. So when I enter a restaurant, you know, I have told people, I said, you know, I have to be able to inspect what I expect. So I mean, we have like a closing list, we have an opening list. Well, you can tell people this all has to be done, but somebody needs to check it. Yes. Well, it doesn't have to be you. I mean, if you have a shift lead, that, that should be their responsibility. So that's just a thought. Do you have checklists? I do. And so that's what we're working on right now is uh, training him to have the same similar expectations that I do because um, I walk in and I see 10 things that need cleaned that other people don't see and so I'm not sure how to get him to see things on my level other than just walking him through it daily and pointing it out until he finally starts. Well, an example there, <laughs> an example there is, is I had a yeah. customer yeah. at a shop yeah. and she hired somebody so go clean the bathroom. Okay, well they clean the bathroom. She got back and she said, well, that's not clean. I said, well, wait a minute. If you own it at a certain level and you want it done a certain way, then you need to clean the bathroom and have them walk and say, this is why I do this, this is what I expect, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in other words, teach them to do it the way you want it done. So I, of just expecting. I do do that and actually in uh, part of my list for him is that I don't want him to actually do all the things I want him to teach. I want him to learn how to, I want it done so that he can teach everybody else how to do it. Some a couple good things on that, Megan, is you might think about them if you ever have, reach out to Rob Good, owner of Tropical Smoothie, and also, also Rick Stark, whether owner of Chick-fil-A. They're very, very touchable individuals. They love sitting down with entrepreneurs, and they love imparting ways of what made them successful. One of the things that they both do well is they empower their leaders to empower people, but they're very strict on accountability. And they have a lot of layers. And so like Chick-fil-A, they have a lot of different layers of leadership and management. Not saying that you need to do that, but the, their accountability metrics are very, very solid. So that's something if you, I mean, those two guys, I don't have Rick's contact info. I do have Rob's contact information. Um, but if anyone has the Rick Starkweather's contact information, that would be a very, very good one for you to sit down with. So ben? That's a good <laughs> That's a good segue to what I was gonna say because uh, we've only been open a few months, and I got very lucky right away to find that kind of person that you're looking for. Um, it can't happen, <laughs> but he's also. <laughs> but um, it's it very, very, uh, very blessed to, to have that already. But I do know that we had to, that your first pick might not always be that pick. And uh, two, two points to that. One, it's interesting we have Chick-fil-A, because from the beginning I said, guys, I don't want to have to tell you everything to do. I want you to be the Chick-fil-A of a VR arcade, okay? Mm -hmm. Want people to come in and have a family-based experience that you guys understand the level of quality that we want to provide. And we started off with lists, 
and eventually we gave them the ability to modify those lists and they have started adding things and when we bring on new people they say this is why we do this and give them the power to say hey you know this is how i want everything to be but you also have they have to understand the heart of where you're going and then give them permission to grow and permission to fail and the second asset to that in finding that right person you um there's not really a technical term for this if i ever write a book i would call it um i tend to have uh uh, uh willie wonka the chocolate factory what's the name of that guy uh the was the professor guy that made all the candy anybody know I'm not that it was a Willy Wonka, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm making sure I get it right. I don't want to culture appropriate uh, candy. Uh, Willy, I, I tend to have uh, Willy Wonka syndrome, okay, where I come in and give them a crazy idea or say, here's my idea of how everything should run. And it doesn't always work in the real world. But you want to, you know, in searching for that person, you can take it. You may have to accept the fact that for now, you're the person that has to go do the, I want to find the ethically sourced things, or I want to find the local partners. You know, they may not be able to step into those roles, but um, beggars can't be choosers, and I've had to learn to not play things so close to the chest. So that would be my advice is be willing to let them not quite meet your expectations at first and grow into those things, and because you're really developing them to have your qualities and your excellence and your mentality, and people um, with you know, like uh, Toby said, businesses are not just, you know, resources and this, the people. So growing those people is gonna be just as important. Awesome, thank you. So one, one more question from Gina, and then we'll say what to our next presenter. Good presentation, good job, thank you. Um, I, I wanna offer a compliment first, because I go to Pineapple List way more than I should. Every time I go, we get really excellent customer service. Like the people who are helping us, whether it's the drive-through or the walk-up, they're very friendly, they're patient, um, they have really good things to say. Um, it's never like, you know, sometimes I go places and people don't really want to help me, but that never happens um, at Pineapple Blitz. So kudos, I can, I can already tell that you're doing a good job on that front. Um, what I want to know more about is just like, like how many employees do you have? Like what, is your, what does your staffing look like, essentially? Um, you can tell me later if you're spending too much time. I have about 10 to 15 in Joplin, uh, and then right now I have five in Arkansas. Awesome, let's give her a big hand this morning. Once we encourage you, don't take off because when we're done, we want to have an opportunity for you to connect with Megan personally. And if you've got some contributions to give to her or if you've got some connections, make sure you offer that to her today. So thank you so much, Megan.